Have you ever felt as though you were doing all the work in a group project? If you're here, it's possible that your research project or other assignments have to do with the concept of social loafing. Welcome to Prepared Leaders. In this video, I'm going to discuss what social loafing is, how it works, and specific measures that you can take to prevent it. Social loafing. What is it? Social loafing is a practice of putting forth less effort when working in a group than when working alone. When playing a game of tug-of-war, Maximilian Ringelmann realized that the group pulling force was less than the sum of the individual abilities. In fact, as more players were added to the tug-of-war game, the average contribution fell. Now, this fact shows that as group size increases, members exert less effort. This argument disproves the notion that pulling people in teams motivates them to perform harder. Now, this might give the whole human resources department hard palpitations. However, this is only partially true, as I'll explain in the remaining portions of this video. So, let's quickly go over some instances so you can sort of get it better. Here is a very brief illustration. Tug of war, group school projects, and performers who ask the crowd to scream are all examples of social loafing. This is because the amount of effort put forth by the group decreases as the number of participants increases. So the game Tug of War is a great example since that's where Maximilian Ringelmann first found it. He came to understand that the amount of pressure in a game of Tug of War did not quite scale up perfectly when additional players were added. In reality, as the number of people increased, each person worked less. Another excellent example is group assignments for homework. The meme depicting one kid doing all the effort while the others get the grade has been seen by all. Social loafers are those who don't contribute to the project. And have you ever attended a performance, event, or other location where the keynote speaker requests that the crowd stand up, maybe say something or clap? This is the ideal setting for social loafing. There are situations when a speaker would even claim that their statement wasn't loud enough. It's interesting to note that as the group size increases, participants in the activity the speaker is requesting them to do are less inclined to take part. Why does social loafing occur? When team members think they won't get anything done and as a result think they don't have to do anything, they start to socially loaf. These are the two main causes of social loafing, according to psychologists. Number 1. Loss of sense of personal accountability Ringo Mann's experiment with a tug-of-war team showed that individual responsibility seems to go down as the size of the team goes up. When they keep their squad together and inspire both individual players and the entire team, the best sports coaches produce amazing outcomes. It's important for these coaches to know what their team needs so they can give each player the space they need to get rid of any pent-up energy. Number 2. Decreased Appreciation for Contributions A team member may elect to back off and enjoy the ride at the expense of the other team members if they feel their contribution won't be worth much, especially in a much larger team context. This is one of the key reasons why so many of us avoid volunteering for work or accepting leadership roles. Simply put, we don't believe we have anything to add. It's possibly also the reason that, during presidential elections, 50% of Americans chose not to vote. In many circumstances, the lounging person might not even be aware of it. Another frequent occurrence that I want to bring up is the distinction between members of an in-group and an out-group. Now, this is typical for school assignments, but I believe we can now find it wherever in the world we are. But before we continue, I'll be giving you time to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and turn on the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And let's continue! In the final section of this video, I'll share some advice on how to control social laziness by adding a little drive. Actually, there are three ways to steer a group in the proper direction. 
These are the tactics of collaboration, content, and choice. This is the conclusion reached by psychologists. This strategy seems to improve the way people work together, which makes it a good alternative to encouraging competition. Now, it's crucial to keep in mind that this functions best during group exercises. Number 1. Collaboration Thus, each team member is responsible for a specific worthwhile activity. For example, the worst social loafer can be put in charge of taking meeting minutes and passing them out so that they don't have anywhere to hide. The idea here is to get each member of your group to accomplish something, and if they don't, hold them responsible. Number 2. Content This is a reference to the significance of a team member's task and how well it fits their unique set of skills. For example, a person who likes to be socially engaged could be an ideal individual to lead a brainstorming session. And allocating work according to each person's talent is a terrific motivator because it gives each person a chance to shine. Number 3. Choice Choice is equally significant since it confers ownership on the person making it. They will have more important things to do than hang out with friends all the time, so it won't be as appealing to them. The basic premise of the third one is to provide everyone with the freedom to do anything they desire. Therefore, teamwork essentially entails holding everyone accountable. People can do what they do best when they are given the freedom to select what to do. And this is what content means. In the end, preventing social loafing is meant to improve the soft, non-task-related parts of how a group works. Collaboration, substance, and choice, which I've already talked about, give group leaders a great way to handle the situation. I think all you have to do to stop social loafing is remember each of these. Teams operate far better when each individual member is motivated to do what they want to do and how they want to do it rather than having one person at the top to tell them what to do. This is because groups should self-optimize from the bottom up rather than being driven from the top down. I hope this short video on social loafing helped you understand why it works and how to manage it, especially if you've been doing all the work. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and turn on the notification bell so you'll know when I upload new content. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you all on my next video.